So this is a run through of the ECDL, ICDL online essentials exam using Internet Explorer 9 and Outlook 2010. So the computer has done all its system checks and we're now sitting at the start screen. So we're going to start it and proceed to go through the different questions. So the first question here, what is a hyperlink? Is it a distribution list of interlinked email addresses? A reference in a document linking to other place in the same document or to another document? Is it a large file linking applications together on the internet? Or is it a communication protocol linking electronic devices? So the answer there is number two. So it's a reference to a document. And remember, a web page is just a document sitting on the internet. So a hyperlink is just a place in that document linking to another place in the document or to a totally new document. In other words, a new place in the web page or a totally new web page. So we click on the answer button. We'll just take a quick chance to have a look at the different windows. So we have the previous to navigate and the skip button. So there are the navigation buttons allow you to skip around. We have the answer and we have the clear button. We have suspend test and end test. In the real exam, you won't have this button, suspend test. It will be a, a timer there, so with your time. So you have 45 minutes to do the exam. The timer will count down from 45 down to zero. Notice we have two answer buttons. It doesn't matter which one that you click. So we have our answer selected and we click on answer. Click on the part of the web address that indicates the top level domain. So this is the top level domain here. It's the google.com bit. And we click into there and it gives us our answer. And then we say answer. Notice that now we have this type of a question is a green arrow. Now the green arrow doesn't necessarily mean that it's the correct answer. It just means that that's where we've chosen to click on. So we click on the answer button. Click on the icon that represents a web browser. So you can see we have six icons there. So we're looking for a web browser. Now we know from our class that a web browser is an application that allows you to browse web pages. And the application we want here is Internet Explorer. So you can see it here. The other ones going from the top left is Microsoft PowerPoint, an application used for making presentations. We have a Xerox phaser, which is a printer. We have Microsoft Outlook 2010, which is the email application we'll be using. We have Microsoft Excel, which is used for doing spreadsheets. Internet Explorer is a web browser, and then we have Microsoft Word, which is used for doing documents. And again, we click the answer button. Notice down at the bottom here, we have our question numbers. In the exam, you'll have whatever question numbers you have. If you skip a question, it will go back to it at the end of the test. You can see my questions are going in as dark grey, the ones I've completed. If I was to skip a question, it would leave it that light grey colour. This question, what is an example of e-commerce? So is it online voting, online tax collection, online ticket sales or online census systems? So you can see these three here, online voting, online ticket sales and online census systems. These are all government type things. So they are known as e-government. E-commerce is described as, so the definition for e-commerce is, is um, selling, buying, selling and advertising on the internet. So anything you're buying or selling or advertising on the internet can be classed as e-commerce. So this online ticket sales. So we click into it and we click on the answer button. Which one of the following is a, an online activity that should be only undertaken on a secure web page? So we can recognize a secure web page by the HTTPS. If you look into the top left hand corner here, you can see that we have HTTPS. Now the S stands for secure transaction of data. We also have the small lock here. So the lock shows you that it's a secure transaction of data. Now any inputting of credit cards or any money values that you're doing should always be done on a secure transaction of data. So you can see here that the first one, purchasing a gift. The other ones, using a search engine, watching TV or playing a game. You don't really need to be secure for this, but purchasing a gift, you would need to be. So we answer. Number six, what is described in the sentence below? It is a method that makes information unreadable for people who do not have access to the information. 
So we have spoofing, phishing, podcasting and encryption. Now the answer is this last one here, it's encryption. So what encryption does is it scrambles up a message. So take for example an email message. It scrambles it up into unreadable code on one end and sends it in that unreadable code. When it gets to the other end, the other email client or the other end is able to unscramble it using a key and it can then read it. So it's it's in case anyone in between sender A and sender B gets to the email, they won't be able to read it if it's encrypted. So we click enter it and we tip them the answer key. The next question, what does HTTPS indicate in the URL address? Earlier on we spoke that it's a secure method. So you can see there the four, questions, four answers it gives us is virus check data, confidential data, quick transaction of data or secure transaction of data. So we know from earlier on that HTTPS, it's Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. The next option then we have is, so we click on answer. What is the purpose of a digital certificate? So the first answer is to establish credentials when doing business on the web, to protect against emails that are carrying computer viruses, to encrypt digital files containing web browsing history or to verify critical functions when developing software applications. So a digital cert is used by the likes of a bank. If you're dealing with a bank, you want to make sure that it is the bank's website that you're on and you can do so by looking at the digital certificate. So you would do it by just clicking on the small lock and going to view certificates. So this is the answer here, it's to establish credentials when doing business on the web. So we click into it and we tip on answer. Number nine, which one of the following actions would help prevent children having uncontrolled access to the internet? Always allow cookies to be stored on your computer. Install an up-to-date antivirus program. Set up the browser so that access is restricted to specific sites. Or use the latest web browser on your computer. So you can see here, setting up the browser that access is restricted to specific sites. So you want to make sure that children can't get onto adult rated sites. And we tip into the answer button. Where should you click to close the browser? So you can see here, we have two X's. We have an X here and we have an X here. And this X is the browser we are using to complete this sample test. So we don't want to close it. It's this main window that we're talking about here. So you can see it's just like a picture. And we would click on the X there and you can see it gives us that green arrow. Now the green arrow, like we said earlier, doesn't necessarily mean that the answer is right. It will be green regardless of where you click. But it does mean that that's just where you've chosen to click. So we click on answer. Where should you click to type in a new URL? So we mentioned that a URL is a web address. So the www.computerclassesonline.ie so the www.computerclasses.ie bit, that's where we would enter a new URL. So we then click on the answer button. Where should you click to refresh the web page? So refreshing a web page is reloading a web page. So what it does in simple terms, it reloads all the information that's on the web page. So that's the refresh button there. You can see it, it's a narrow pointing round when we click on answer. Where should you click to open the link? Liverpool John Lennon Airport. So you can see here we have Liverpool John Lennon Airport and it is a link. So the way we know a link is nine times out of 10, a link will be underlined. It could be in blue text, that's more of an older thing, but they will always be underlined like that. So you can see there's a number of links. If you're on the internet and everyday life a good way to know if there's a hyperlink present is if you hover across it it will change into a small hand for you so we click on answer where should you click to open the link what's on in a new tab so you can see they have already right clicked on the hyperlink what's on and they've given us a right click menu here so in the right click menu we have this option called open a new tab and we click on that and it would open in a new tab for us and we click on answer. 